Okay, I put tube to Aaron here. Hope you're doing very well. Today we'll be carrying on with my library tour for 2024 and we'll be uh, back to normal. So last time uh, we were going through poetry where um, there were quite a few books to get through and so I was on the other side of the camera and we were flying through. Uh, whereas today we'll be um, going through book by book again. We're on this bookcase here which is um, one of the main or sort of the main fiction uh, bookshelf and um, it's, it's mainly books that I suppose I would consider classics uh, so not all of but most of the books that I might consider um, classic fiction um, is here alphabetized uh, by author's last name um, there are a few other things that have sort of crept in that we'll get to uh, but we're up on the top shelf which is just out of view I've got our A's, our B's and our C's. Uh, starting off, and I'm, I'm hoping this is where this author belongs, uh, we've got um, Alain Fournier, uh, Le Grand Mul Moulnay. Uh, my terrible <laughs> French pronunciation there. Uh, I picked this up on a, on a whim. Um, it says it's a, a masterly exploration of the twilight world between boyhood and manhood with its mixture of idealism realism and sheer caprice but that is not its only magic there is a magic of setting of narrative of the abject beauty of the heroine of the inexplicable elusiveness of the lost domain itself and i think particularly uh, what it said there about the setting uh, and that's the landscape of the book being part of its magic um i was recently a guest on a live stream for uh, greg uh, from another Bibliophile Reads and Alan um, from um, Big Hard Books and Classics. Um, and we got onto the subject of, um, I suppose, why I read uh, classic uh, literature and um, I suppose my motivation for it, what got me into it. Um, and really, we, we sort of got onto the subject of setting and of the landscape of the book and how that's portrayed and the, I suppose, how vividly. Uh, that's portrayed um, and I think if I can when I'm thinking about a book after I've finished it if I can still um, put myself into that book's landscape then the rest of it sort of comes back to me um, so we'll see if this is a book uh, where that happens and uh, apologies for the ducking out I just want to <laughs> make sure I'm not throwing my books on the floor um, next up we've got Louisa May Alcott's uh, The Complete Little Women uh, this is just, I think, like a print-on-demand uh, kind of thing. Um, but it's got uh, Little Women, uh, Good Wives, Little Men, and Joe's Boys in it. I think all I've read so far is uh, Little Women. Um, so I should probably revisit it at some point. Uh, and then next up, we've got we've got tons of Jane Austen, um, many of which I'm sure you've seen before, um, but we'll... Uh, grab it down, this little handful, um, and this is a, a set that my, my wife bought when she uh, first kind of got into Jane Austen, I think, um, and it's uh, put out by Everyman's Library, um, so we've got the major novels there all together, so we've got Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility, I quite like that cover there. We've got uh, Mansfield Park with a quite crazy cover, really. Uh, we've got Emma. We've got Persuasion and uh, Northanger Abbey. <laughs> Again, quite an odd cover. Um, and then there's there's a little more Jane Austen, some uh, as a duplicate. Um, I've got another copy of um, of Persuasion. Um, that's my my favourite Jane Austen, um, and this is from Transatlantic Press. So that's Persuasion, and then we've also got Lady Susan, The Watsons, and Sand Sanditon or Sanditon Sanditon, um, and um, I haven't read any of this, so I should probably get to this next before I decide to sort of revisit. Uh, Jane Austen's major novels. 
Um, and then next up we've got Isaac Babel um, of Sunshine and Bed Bugs, uh, put out by Pushkin Press. I really love these Pushkin Press books. As you can see, I've done my best to destroy this one. I um, wasn't a particular fan of Isaac Babel. His his writing seemed a little too um, overly simplistic and kind of felt uninspired to me. So I, I didn't particularly like him, um, but I'm, I'm willing to give him a go. There were moments in here that I liked. Um, so it might just be a case of um, waiting a few years and then trying him again. Um, and then we've got uh, Looking Backwards, um, 2000 to 1887 by Edward Bellamy. Uh, this is a um, industrial uh, utopian novel, um, imagining a sort of hyper-industrial future. Um, and it's one of those where the, the main character falls asleep and, and wakes up in the future. Um, I'd, I'd like to reread this um, at some point. I can't really remember all that much about it. Um, but little a little later on, we'll be getting on to uh, News From Nowhere by uh, William Morris, which was a, a response to um, Looking Backward. Uh, and then we have got, if I don't destroy the bookcase, uh, we've got Borges. I think this is a a desert island book for me, the uh, collected fictions uh, with a lovely uh, Bruegel. Um, is it Bruegel? Um, sorry, not Bruegel, Bosch, Hieronymus Bosch, uh, The Garden of Earthly Delights. And um, I, I'm, I'm also quite tempted by the, uh, I suppose, the Penguin Deluxe Edition uh, version, the sort of the classic blue and black that you see um, around quite a lot. Um, but yeah, absolutely love um, Borges' uh, fiction. There's something to his style and just, I suppose, his mind and the, the way it works that I really love. Um, so yeah, whether it's this edition or <laughs> some other edition, he's going to be, um, I think, in my library for, um, well, as, as long as I have one, I hope. Um, another great imagination, uh, we've got Ray Bradbury, the, the illustrated man. This is all I've got of Ray Bradbury at the moment and um, I think the only Ray Bradbury that I've read from cover to cover but really enjoyed this and um, just great short stories and there's a kind of framing device to that uh, collection that some people think is a bit a bit thin um, but I, I don't mind it too much I thought it was quite quite cool it reminded me of um, of the Canterbury Tales a bit I suppose um, and then next up we're into into Bronte land. So first up we've got Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. I haven't read this yet. This is on um, the list of Bronte books that I have yet to read. Um, then we've got The Tenants of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. Um, I, I really, really liked it. I think that there's a funny thing that happens when I read a Bronte book where I um as I'm reading it I feel like it's <laughs> the best thing I've ever read and it so it takes a bit of time for me to work out um you know j just what I think of it just how good I think it is um and I probably I probably would put this just below um Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre I think I would start with Wuthering Heights then Jane Eyre and then The Tenant of Wildfell Hall that's my ranking of them um, and then, you know, there's, there's the rest then, but um, for the three sort of major ones, that's where I'd, where I'd place them. But they're all really, really good novels. Um, and then we've got Jane Eyre. Um, so as I said, I still really like this and slightly prefer it, I think, to The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Um, and then we've got two two copies of um, Wuthering Heights. We've got the, the Penguin Deluxe Edition. I really love um, and who did these illustrations does it say hopefully it does um, let's have a look um, oh dear Wait, I'm sure it says it somewhere oh I'm quite sad <laughs> if it if it doesn't say um, ah, the cover design and illustration is by Ruben Toledo 
Um, and I, I picked this up in the um, in the Bronte parsonage, so it's got the little little stamp. If you can make it out just on the bottom that they popped on. And the last time I visited, um, and then a um, the the edition I had before that, which is a a Wordsworth um, classics edition, which I, I I don't mind this one. You know, some people like to make fun of some of the the choices for the cover design, um, but as uh, Wordsworth um, editions go, I find this one quite effective. You know, I'm wondering whether this this pile of books next to me is going to fall over. Might have to start a new one. Uh, next up, we've got the Thirty Nine Steps by John Buchan. Um, just a great um, adventure story, a great spy story. That um, I suppose, as some people would say, um, unputdownable. Um, even though a, a lot of uh, the <laughs> what goes on in this book is just sort of filling up time. Um, but as you're reading it, you really don't mind that you're just waiting for a few days to pass so that the sort of main plot elements can actually happen. Um, and then, slightly different, um, <laughs> we've got uh, The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. I don't think I've ever read the, the actual full Pilgrim's Progress. Um, and then we've got The Making of a Marchioness by uh, Francis Hudson Burnett. I just caught a, uh, a bookmark because uh, it's a, a Persephone edition. Um, and the thing I really love about Persephone, I've probably shown you with another one, is the way they have these lovely, each one has its own end papers. And they um, when, when, when you buy them, it comes with a matching bookmark, uh, which I really love. Uh, and uh, everything's collapsed, so it's a bit of, it, it's chaos up there now. Uh, we'll try our best to, to fix it. Next up, a book I'm planning to get to quite soon, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, the Stronghold by Dino Buzzati. Is it Buzzati? Yeah, Buzzati. Um, I think also translated as the Tartar Steppe. Um, and it's essentially about loads of soldiers waiting at the stronghold, um, waiting for the enemy to turn up. And they've spent their whole time waiting for the enemy to turn up and maybe the <laughs> the enemy doesn't even exist. So it, it seems like quite an, an existential uh, novel. So we'll, we'll see we'll see what it's like. But I've, I've heard good things about it. Um, and then we've got some Italo Calvino. So we've got the... Complete Cosmo comics, uh, which are a lot of fun on the whole, but often a little mind-boggling, I suppose. Um, we have got If on a Winter's Night, A Traveller, which I really enjoyed. Uh, it's my favourite thing that I've read by Calvino so far. Oh, and it's, it's all fallen over again. Um, and then, oh, if I can dig it out from the wreckage... We've got Invisible Cities, which is what I'll be going to next with Calvino, um, which is essentially Marco Polo and uh, Kublai Khan uh, chatting and inventing all these cities. But apparently um, it gradually becomes clear that the, the city that, he, um, that Marco Polo is describing is in actual fact just Venice. So we'll, we'll see what, what that's like. I've never been to Venice as I... As I said in the, the last tag video I made, uh, the time and place tag, um, but wouldn't mind visiting eventually. Uh, then next up, we've got The Outsider by Albert Camus. I really love the cover, just this person just running away through the dunes. Um, yeah, I've got more Albert Camus uh, downstairs, um, but yeah, really love this book. Uh, then we've got another one I'd love to get to, hopefully this year. We've got um, R.U.R. and The War with the Newts by Carol Chapek, um, a Czech writer, um, a sci-fi writer, um, who um, essentially invented the word robot. And I, if I'm 
I think Mark from Book Time with Elvis will have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the word robot in, in Czech is essentially like the word for like a worker, um, like sort of proletariat or, so, or, or something like that, maybe even like a, a peasant worker or a serf or something, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, but don't, don't quote me, it's all a bit vague, um, but I, I think that's right. Um, then we've got Truman Capote, uh, a couple of books, I suppose the, the whole range for <laughs> Truman Capote. I'm hoping the whole bookshelf doesn't fall apart and bury me. Uh, we've got In Cold Blood, uh, which, which is all I've read of him so far. Um, very bleak, but I suppose quite uh, journalistic um, about... A, a really quite a terrible murder that really happened um, and then uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's which um, is just just a little bit different I think um, uh, then we've got some uh, Leonora Carrington uh, so we've got down below uh, which is a a memoir of her time in a in a mental institution um, and I, I really like this I think this is the most compelling thing I've read by her so far um, and then uh, there's The Hearing Trumpet uh, which is a um, the, the, the only novel that she wrote about an old lady who's deaf um, and her family give her a, a hearing trumpet um, and uh, actually one of her friends gives her a hearing trumpet and uh, when, once she's giving it she can uh, spy in on her family and she finds out that they're uh, planning to put her in a retirement home um, but it's a, a retirement home unlike any other uh, that you could imagine and then going on from there we've got some uh, John le Carre and um, so the first one I pulled down with the Leonora Carrington it's um, Call for the Dead uh, which is his first novel and the first novel with Smiley in it it's um, really more of a sort of closer to a murder mystery, I suppose, than a, a normal spy uh, book, but um, I, I quite liked it. It's not it's not too long, um, but certainly um, sort of comparing it to like the, the spy who came in from the cold or something like that, you can definitely see um, where he was going as, as, a, as a writer and um, the way he was developing. So this is very sort of early, uh, Le Carre, but still a really good read. Um, and then, speak of the devil, um, <laughs> we've got uh, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, which is probably um, my favourite Le Carre so far, but I've only read, I think, about three or four um, Le Carre's so far. Um, and then there's uh, a couple I'd like to get to. Uh, there's The Looking Glass War, um, oh, I'll just grab the rest since there's not much left. And there's uh, Little Drummer Girl. Um, I do have some more to carry downstairs as well. Um, and then finally, we've got Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by uh, Lewis Carroll. Um, and again, I've got another edition of this somewhere uh, downstairs, I think. Um, and this has got um, Through the Looking Glass. Um, yeah, it's got through the looking glass in there as well, um, and this has got all the um, all the illustrations. Um, this isn't the edition that I read uh, the last time I read it, so I'd probably quite like to try this one uh, next time. And there we go. So that's the first shelf of uh, of this bookcase that we're up to. Um, so we'll carry on. We'll be still in the letter C. Um, and it'll only take us through to the letter D, so um, I guess the letters C and D um, have a little more content. Um, but yeah, I hope there was at least something uh, in that random mixture that um, struck your fancy. Um, yeah, so let me know uh, what you think, and um, I guess I'll, I'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.